Hi everyone, and welcome to our application development with Bytes Accelerated Libraries webinar. My name, as mentioned, is Bruce Xue. I'm part of the technical marketing team. I have many years' experience on high performance computing as a software engineer. I'm going to be your presenter for the next hour as we talk about the Vitus Accelerated Libraries. I will demonstrate how to use the Vitus Library to design your application and let your development simpler. There are many things we can discuss about the Vitus Accelerated Libraries. In this session, I will focus mainly on application development. How to solve the specific problem and leave the heavy part with the Vitis Accelerated Libraries and how to make your development with Vitis Flow. So, I'll take a quick look at Vitis Unified Software Platform and Vitis Accelerated Libraries before we go to the practical example. And last, I will give some key points and a summary. I'll just start off by giving you a quick introduction to the Vitis Unified Software Platform. Nowadays, while FPGA is used more and more widely, AMD Xilinx wishes to enable all developers to build applications on FPGA, SOC, and ACAP. Generally, several products have similar functions but different form factors. It would be best if the application could be deployed to different platforms so that we can reuse the algorithm and the implementation at the max level. These are the targets of Vitis enables all developers to build and deploy on all platforms. You can find the software platform and this higher level of integration really extend the capability of Vitis, regardless of whether you are building an application that's going to run locally, what we call an edge application, or something running in the cloud. To enable all developers, Vitis provides accelerated libraries and domain-specific development, such as TensorFlow integration for machine learning. Vitis also allows users to develop acceleration kernels with RTL and C language. So, Vitis gives you the capability whether you are the hardware engineer or software engineer, you can work with your preferred language. Which means, if you are a traditional SDK user, you will be comfortable with Vitis, such as compiling your design, developing your application, and using the Vitis platform. Meanwhile, if you are at a high level of developing systems or software developers, then you are looking for acceleration, programmable logical resources, or the other resources that you find within the Xilinx devices, or the architecture of AI engine. You don't have to have a detailed knowledge of the hardware and of things like VHDL, over a logger, or how to integrate RTL accelerators with your software. A lot of that has been automated. You can get abstract away and leverage by taking advantage of Vitis accelerated library and provided by Xilinx and Xilinx partners. So for the software developers that's working on this higher level, what we call the Vitis flow, not everything can be run via GUI or can be run from the command line. In order to involve the acceleration, we use the Vitis runtime environment we call the XRT that provides unified software interface for high-level applications. And we also have a layer of Vitis target platform connects between the user programming interface and the deployment targets. Then we go to the second part. I will briefly introduce the Vitis accelerated libraries. Vitis offers an extensive set of performance-optimized libraries that are open source and available to all on GitHub. Now, common libraries of math, linear algebra, statistics, and DSP are relevant to a broad range of applications and industries. These are basic algorithm blocks. In addition to the common libraries, there are several domain-specific libraries as well that are pre-optimized for specific workloads. Examples of these libraries, like vision and imaging processing, quantitative finance, data analytics and database, data security, we have over 600 pre-optimized functions across all the accelerated libraries available today. Meanwhile, the beneficial methodology offered by Vitis 
It also enables the partners in the Silence ecosystem to leverage the libraries for customers and to strengthen the overall solutions to use the Silence platforms. Vitae's library offers different levels of abstraction, give you the accessibility you need to use them as you wish. And the lowest level are the library primitives, or we call the L1 functions. They are the smallest building blocks of functionality from dialing accelerated the kernels. For those of you who are familiar with HLS, you can also think of them as individual HLS functions. Now you can customize and combine multiple L1 functions together to form a kernel. Next comes the library kernels, or we call L2 functions. They are designed as individual performance optimized kernels with a required interface. The Xilinx runtime library is implemented as a combination of user space and kernel driver components. You can combine multiple L2 functions together to form your end-to-end -end codes. You also have the option to build the level 2 kernels using test cases and make files. This is primarily to test the functionality in simulation by software emulation and hardware emulation option in Vitis. And you also can run them directly on supported hardware after building the acceleration. And the highest level is the library API, or we call L3 functions. It can be directly called in the host application. It's actually pre-built FPGA binaries. They are ready to be called from host code by a library API's call. You can summarize and rebuild this L3 function with any specific changes for your own unique applications. In summary, you can use the Vitis libraries as algorithm building blocks, modify them to suit your specific needs, or use the source code simply as a reference to complete your own kernels. Choose the flexibility that you need. You can access everything and download the libraries on GitHub, and the link is here. Libraries are open source under the Apache 2.0, which is quite permissive. They are organized using a uniform structure on GitHub. Each library comes with comprehensive documentation with a description of functionality, function parameters required, an individual performance estimate as well. The source code for the library functions are organized into different subfolders based on the different levels of abstraction. In addition to the source code, we also offer examples and test cases we are required to build and emulate for these libraries. You can also access performance benchmarks. And more importantly, you can access the steps to reproduce these performance benchmarks. Everything that you need is running with these libraries is available on GitHub. Now, I'll start with a practical situation to show how to use the Vitis accelerated libraries to solve the specific problem. I take the Vitis graph library to develop an application for finding the shortest path. This example is located in the Vitis tutorial on GitHub. The shortest path problem is a classic issue in graph theory. That's the problem of finding a path between two vertices in a graph. They may have the edges with weights or not. The shortest path problem can be defined for graph, whether undirected, directed, or mixed. This means our graph is made up of vertices, also called nodes or points, and edges, which connect the vertices, we also call the links or lines. If edges link two vertices with no direct, we call it undirected graphs, or edges link asymmetrically is direct graph. Here is a simple directed graph. We have some most important algorithms to solve this problem. The first two deconstructed by one fold are commonly used for the weighted graph. Allow me to introduce some details for this problem. The problem of finding the shortest path between two intersections on a road map may be modeled as a special case of the shortest path problem in graphs. We further simplify the problem by computing the distance from other points to source, as we take point 1 as the source. The problem may look like simple, but it could be the basement problem in some navigation applications like GPS. So. We have the abstracted structure to solve the problem. 
first step, we calculate the weight, and then we compute the distance, use the SSP algorithm, and last, we do some development on the results. Obviously, implementing the SSP algorithm is the core development in this application. So you may ask why we use FPGA to solve this problem. In the big data array, graphs are used as effective data in many scenarios. Graph processing applications are widely used in various fields to take out the potential value of graph data, such as business relations in finance, social networks, GPS, and IoT, etc. But they're facing some challenges like the irregular accession pattern of graph processing applications, introduce some irregular workload, intensive read and write updates, irregular memory processor, and irregular communications. Existing general architectures cannot effectively handle the above challenges. In order to overcome these challenges, a large number of graph processing accelerator designs have been proposed. The tailored computation pipeline, memory subsystem, storage subsystem, and the communication subsystem to the graph processing application. Graph processor accelerators have achieved significant improvement in performance and energy efficiency compared with the generally architectures. Then we decide to use FPGA to solve this problem. The next question is how to do your development by Vitis. There are primary four main steps. First step is identify the needs for acceleration and establishing your performance goals in your application. Now, in my application, I want to put all computing parts to be accelerated, especially the SSP algorithm. Once you make the decision, next step in the process is designing the accelerated kernels that can be deployed on FPGA fabrics. To do this, you can use performance-optimized Vitis libraries, designing custom algorithm in C, C++, or you can extend your codes in MATLAB Simulink, and you can also reuse RTL IPs. Next, you will build accelerated kernels, analyze the performance, and debug any issues using the Vitis core tools. This step, then you want to verify your function correction and algorithm validate performance goals met. Follow the guide, you will be able to raise your performance you need. Finally, you want to build for deployment on hardware. The Vitis compiler built FPGA binary for all the Xilinx platforms by running ConsorSys implementation. Now, let's take a close look to step 2. Listen to the previous slide. There are different ways to design your accelerated kernels, but actually forms two catalogs. One is using pre-optimized libraries. This is easy to run. A second, design your own customer kernels with RTL, C, C++, or MATLAB Simulink. In my application, I will design my main kernel SSP with the Vitis accelerated libraries, and I'll write other kernels in C++. To do the SSP part, we can use different levels of abstraction as we mentioned before. I will use L2 pre-optimized kernels to realize my core development. Before we use the function provided by SSP kernels, let's take a look at Vitis graph library. Vitis graph library is an open source Vitis library written in C++ for accelerating graph applications in a variety of use cases. It now covers the level of accelerations, the module level L1, the predefined kernel level called L2, and the software API level L3. Currently, this includes the following algorithm implementations, such as we have key nearest neighborhoods in similarity analysis, page rank commonly used in web search in centrality analysis, as we have Lubin modularity in community detection, as we use in this session, single source shortest path, SSP in path finding. You can access graph library on GitHub. There are subfolders for different levels. You can find documentation and benchmarks result. 
They also have test cases for you to run the library. Here's the link. Then we go to the doc portal. You can find the information you want, like internal design of SSP. All the useful information of the internal design are shown in this page. You can check it out, like implementation, interface, profiling, etc. In this design, the implementation is based on the Belmont Fold algorithm equipped with a first in, first out queue. The idea of a Belmont Fold algorithm seems like processing all edges with relaxation in regression of n minus 1. Now, let me give a quick introduction for the implement and interface for data format. We have five functional blocks as shown in the figure. The first block is charging to load the next vertex in the queue and pass it to the second block. The second block loads the offset value associated with the current vertex from the CSR offset values and pass it to the next block. The third one loads the ID and weight of the next hop vertices according to the offset values and pass these IDs and weights to the load rest. The fourth load the distance of the next hop vertices already in the result. And calculate the new distance and decide whether the distance of every next hop vertex should be updated. The last one update all the distance to the new value and push all the update vertices into the queue. The system starts from pushing the source into the queue and iterate until the queue is empty. The interface given by this system should be a directed graph in a CSR format, means compressed sparse row. I will use a simple matrix to show what is a CSR format. This is a way of compressing sparse matrix in row. We use three arrays to store the values. Weights for non-zero values. Indices store the column index of non-zero values. And offset is used for the index of first non-zero values of each each row in the index like this marked red elements element and the last element in the offset is the sum of the weights L2 kernel are built into Excel bins targeting to Avio accelerator cars. Here are the list of Avio cars available today. Uh, in my application, I use the Avio U15. As we discussed in previous slides, source code for library functions are written in C, C++, which improves code readability. You don't need to have the knowledge of the RTL and focus on the algorithm. Leave the heavy part with the Vitis libraries. You can focus on other development. How can we use the L2 kernels with almost no changes? First, we need to know how the graph library L2 works. The L2 APIs provide HLS function that can be directly built into a Vitis computer unit. These APIs are located at here. There are a number of compute unit designs running on Avio cars. They provide a set of compute unit designs implemented in HLS codes. These L2 APIs need to be compiled as OpenCL kernels and will be called by OpenCL APIs. Or you can use XRT APIs. You can take test cases of L2 APIs as a good reference. To compile and run the Excel bins. The SSP hider provides a function interface. Design the kernel in your applications. A typical code for calling L2 API may look like this. Ending the X term C, extending the code. After the main kernel design, we can focus on our customer kernels, which seems like the data processing. Let me demonstrate the original data set. In the field of transportation, many problems and algorithms are based on the city traffic network's dataset. We assume a city map as a directed graph with weights. 
the networks are composed by the news and the links. Generally, transportation city networks have some original data sets like nudes, floor, and nets. The nude stores longitude and latitude. The floor have the volume and the cost from the initial to the terminal. And the net have the free flow time and the BPR function parameter B and P. Then we can compute our weights with this data set. The BPR function represents for the US Bureau of Public Road functions, linking the travel time to the free flow time. In my application, I'm concerned about the cost and the travel time, so I compute the travel time with the BPR function and use this weight every function to compute my weights. That means you can use other functions to calculate your weights. It's only a reference. This computing part seems like a loop, so I decided to design my own accelerators. Then I design my customer kernels in C++. One is with average kernels for the computing part. Other is a search kernel for searching result. When we complete the accelerated part, we should organize the host code to use FPGA binaries with OpenCL APIs or XRT APIs. Typically, there have four steps to organize your host code. First step, create a platform and OpenCL API kernels, like kernels name, devices, and context. Then create buffer and transfer data from host to hardware, and hardware back to the host. After the preparation, we set argument and run the task. And last step, after computing, we can do some development on main code, like output information. We are basically done for the development. Then we can write the make file to compile our application using the Vitis compiler to link and compile our kernels and using the analyzer to do some profiling and using the debugger for some issues. After that, making your application running on the board. Till now, we finish all the system level design. Let's see the host and the kernel paradigm. The host are developed by C++ with OpenCL, and the kernels are designed with C++. The host and the kernels connect with PCIe, and I put all the computing part on the FPGA side. There have three kernels. The main kernel SSP is designed by the Vitis graph library, and the others are customer kernels. All the data flow are in the global memory, which is HBM in this project. Let's see the development path. First step, designing the main kernel with Vitus graph libs. Lifting the heavy part with graph library, we can focus on our customer kernels. Then do your host programming with OpenCL API or XRT API. After that, write your make file to compile your application and prepare the data set and running on the board. You can see, using the Vitus accelerated libraries, make our development easier and lighter, improving the efficiency. Now, let me give you a brief summary. Vitis gives you the flexibility to do your development with your preferred language and deploy your application on Xilinx devices. Meanwhile, Vitis offers open source performance optimized library to make your development easier. Now, you may have a basic understanding of Vitis flow and how to do your development with the Vitis libraries going through the specific problem of SSP. Please try to make your system level design, taking this example as a reference. Okay, that's all for today's webinar. For next steps, welcome to Access download page for latest Vitis product release. We also encourage you to access our GitHub repo to get more Vitis flow tutorial and example designs. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's dive into this projection.
make a directory to organize your application. The demo is my working path. And then download the application from the Vitex tutorial on GitHub. There are several subfolders for different needs. Today, we will use the SSP application under the hardware design. And this folder is divided by two catalogs, one for architecture and another for implemented kernels. The SSP app tutorial belongs to the design tutorial. Let's get into the target tutorial. You can take a quick look at the structure. The application is divided by Vitex 22.1. You can learn knowledge of what problem the application solves and how the application works. Let's back to the top level and make sure you use the branch of 22.1 and download the repo. We use the git clone command. When the download is completed, let's see the hierarchy of the Vitex tutorial. We can find the SSP application under the design tutorials in the hardware acceleration folder. Next, let's run the application follow the tutorials guide. You can find the basic ideas and the brief description of the development steps. Let's go into the first session for details. You can see the main kernel of SSP is designed by the graph library L2, and the APIs are located in graph L2 path. You can find more information about the internal design on the doc page, where it displays user guide and API documentation. You can find the SSP information under the L2 branch. There are algorithm, interface, implementation, and profiling. After main kernel design, it comes with custom kernels. The weight average and the search kernels are designed with C++. To use and activate these kernels, we organize our main codes with OpenCL. After program, we manage our projection with makefile, compiling the kernels with Vitex compiler and the host code with GNU compiler. You roughly know the processing of the development. Now, let's set up the environment and the tools before proceeding the tutorial. And make sure that you have installed all the tools dependencies. If you don't know how to prepare the tools, please refer to the document for details. And there have some examples combined to set up Vitex tools and XRP. Check out the platform list and make sure to use the U50. Here I use the latest version. To be able to work with the libraries, you need to download the Vitex library from the GitHub. Choose the master branch and download the library into the local path. After the download is complete, browse the subfolder to open the graph library. And you can find three different levels. Let's go into the libraries folder. Check out the branch. Make sure to use the master. It's important to set your local Vitex library path to environment for compiling your code. And there have some setting options. If your system is Ubuntu, please set the library path like this command. An option setting for some compiling error. And then let's learn how the L2 API works. The L2 APIs under the include folders is a part of subfolder in the L2. Let's dive into L2 abstraction. They provide a pure FPGA-based graph accelerators. You can see several compute unit designs. These are implemented in HLS codes. We use the SSP API. Let's see the codes of SSP. The function interface are provided at the bottom. 
you can see these two functions. The difference is, is whether you have the parent's news. Now let's design our SSP kernel. Let's open the application folder first. Here is the project folder. We have host codes, kernel codes, and make file. Let's read the kernels. External your code with external language to use L2 APIs. We define the data format in the header. After that, we can focus on our customer kernels design. Here are two customer kernels. One is with average and another is search. We can read the code. The customer kernels are written in C++. A weight average kernel have a function of compute designed in a loop. And third kernel designed for result query. After we design the kernels, we can organize our main codes. Writing the main code in C++ with OpenCL or XRT. Remember to include your head file if your kernel has the header. Here to prepare for the data, and then we create the kernel platforms, devices. We create buffer for data transfer from a host to hardware, the hardware back to host. Remember use the HBM, push all the data set to the hardware, and setting the algorithm and run the task and do some result development. And last, we use the make file to manage our project. I'll give a brief introduction of make option. You can compile kernels, host, or together, or just run the application. Remember set the library path as we done before. For the kernels code, we use the Vitis compiler to compile the C++ to XO and link the XO to XLBing. And for the host code, we use G++. They have separate command where you can execute the application using the run option with the default. The emulation environment has been written in the make file. I'll give you some more details when we run the demo. Before running the application, we need to do some processing for the dataset. Remember to use the CSR format for the data set waiting for computing. It's in the CSR data folder. And you can find the indices and weights in the same file. And the first row represents the number of edges. And we have news file. It's often longitude and latitude. And we have offset file. The first row shows the number of news and the city name. You may need to calculate the offset from the original COO format. Here I design program for transfer. Put the original data under COO folder. The original data are composed by the information of initial and terminal. To execute the trans program, you can run the script with two arguments. Let's read the dataset for details. The CSR data folder is the dataset path index and weights in the same file, like cost, full of free time, etc. coordinate in the news file. An offset file is stored the index of non-zero value in the indices arrays. As I said previously, if you need to compute the offset, use the COO to CSR program. Let's read some codes. This program is also written in C++, and I use some for loop to do the transfer. As I said before, put the original data in the CO data folder. There have the initial and the terminals information like point 0 to point 1. And let me show how to execute the program with a script to generate the offset file. 
you need to set two arguments. First is the name of COO data, and the second argument is the offset name as you wish. And you can create TXT or MTX format. There will show the compiling and running information on the screen. You can find the offset under the CSR folder if the file is created successfully. Okay, then we can run the application. And we use the XRT initial file for the profiling and the debug. XRT library uses various control parameters to specify debugging, profiling, and message logging when running the host application and the kernel execution. So if you are a command line user, the XRT initial file needs to be created manually and refer to the document for supported case. Till now, we can build the project. There are two ways to run the application. First way, you can use the make run option to execute the application directly with default setting. You don't need to do more in this mode, even if the target environment set as software and hardware emulation, because the emu configuration has been set in the make file. Or in another way, you can compile the Excel bin and host code separate, and use the active command with argument to run the application where you are allowed to set other data. But in this way, you need to set the emulation environment manually. After running the application, you can access the result on the screen. Now, let me show the demo to check out the command list. Now, I'll make target to software emulation to show the first compiling way with the default setting. Now you get the result. Input something as indicated on the screen. The zero option to show all the results and exit. Or you can input any other points like two. Let me show the latitude and latitude and the width path or 22. Or you can input y to exit. You can find the software Excel being generated under the execution path. Compiling and the link logs are under the build folder. While you can find the XRT summary is generated automatically. I use the clean option to clean up. And basically, hardware emulation can run in the same way. Now, I will show another method with the hardware mode. Let's see if there has a correct board on the machine before we run in the application. First, we compile the kernels targeting to the hardware. And this process may take a few hours. Now you can see the hardware Excel bin is generated successfully. And the logs are in the hardware build folder. Next, let's compile the host code. The executed binary is generated successfully, named short path. Let's run the application, inputting the active command. You can see the output of number of nodes, number of links, and the kernels has been created successfully. There are no error. Input zero to show all the results. Use the lightest analyzer to check out the profiling. You can see the system diagram platform diagram and the data transform. It's convenient to improve your performance using the Whitey's tool. Till now, we finished all the parts of the entire system level designs. And there have another option session. If you are interested in developing the Whitey's library with the GUI, you can take this session as a reference. In a summary, try to start your own design with Whitehaze and Whitehaze library after going through this example. In addition, we also encourage you to explore other design in Whitehaze tutorials. Choose the examples as you wish. While we have a lot of test cases and benchmarks in Whitehaze library L2,
and we also have software level test cases in the L3. Make a try to test and reproduce these codes. At the same time, we have the acceleration example repo. You can learn how to use the features from the examples. That's all for today's webinar. Thanks for your watching. Please leave your comments and feel free to contact me if there have any problems.